Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're gonna take care of a couple of housekeeping things to add some really cool effects to our Drenches of War game, specifically dealing with collisions. Now, right now, when we run our game, we have tanks driving around and they shoot at buildings, but we don't really have any visual indicator saying, hey, you've hit a building. And more importantly, the buildings don't even do anything when they get hit. How lame is that? Well, we're going to fix that right now. There's a really cool feature that Mapbox has where we can add modifiers to our vectors as we did with adding these tags. And one of the cool things that we can do is add scripts to these buildings or whatever's generated. So we're going to go with that option. The first thing we're going to need is a script to add. Let's do that by expanding our scripts folder and going into this collision handlers folder. And we're going to create a new C sharp script. And we're just going to name this Mapbox Collision. Let's go with Manager. Then we'll double click it to go into edit script mode. Now let's go ahead and clear out these two functions because we're not going to need start or update. Let's start with a serialized field. Private string target tag. And we're going to set that to enemy projectile. And then let's go ahead and serialize this field and call it private string building tag. And we'll set that to building with a capital B. One more serialized field. Private string. And this will be called POI tag. And we'll set that to all caps POI. And then we've got a couple of important functions to run. This is going to look a lot like one of the audio managers we dealt with in the last video. We're going to create a private void on collision enter and pass in a collision called other. And we're going to say if other dot game object dot tag or rather dot compare tag and pass in the target tag. Then we're going to call a function called handle damage that we're going to write here in just a minute. Next, we'll need a function private void on trigger enter. And it's going to pass in a collider called other as well. And we're going to say if other dot compare tag to the target tag. And if that returns true, then we want to go ahead and handle the damage. Next function we'll need is private void handle damage. And this function is pretty straightforward because of our game manager. We're just going to go ahead and compare tags to find out what kind of tag we're dealing with here. So we're just going to say, if game object dot compare tag building tag. So if it's a building tag, then we just want to call game manager dot instance dot building hit. Else if game object dot compare tag. And we're going to compare that to the POI tag. There we go. If it's a point of interest, then we want to call game manager dot instance dot POI hit. Now you'll notice we don't really have a function written for this. And the question is, why would we want to differentiate here? Well, in our game, we're going to go ahead and make points of interest worth more points when it's hit by a tank. We don't want subcomponents to be able to arbitrarily control how much each building is worth. 
because that could change and it gets messy to have upkeep on. So we want all of that to happen in the game manager. So we'll throw this function in there in just a bit to make this work. But for right now, just roll with it. So perfect, that function is done. Now we're gonna go ahead and write one more function and we're gonna say private void paint building. And we're gonna pass in a game object of other. This function is gonna give us a really cool functionality. It's gonna be, it's gonna help us paint buildings the color of whatever, whatever paint glob hit it last. And that's gonna provide a whole nother visual cue for our users when there's a tank attacking a building so they can go take care of it. Now to do this, we're gonna do a couple of risky things. So let's wrap this in a try catch. And I'm just gonna catch a general exception. And if we catch an exception, we're gonna say print E to print out whatever exception it was to the debug log. So inside of this try, we're gonna say renderer paint renderer equals other dot get component of type renderer. So we're grabbing the renderer off of the other game object. Then we're gonna say color color equals paint renderer dot material dot color. So we're grabbing the other, which we expect to be that paint glob or paint ball, and we're grabbing the color off of it, and we're going to use that here in just a second. Now we say renderer renderer equals get component of type renderer, and then for each material material in renderer.materials we're going to say material dot shader equals shader dot find and we're going to look for the color shader with a capital C and then we're going to set that material with a new color so material dot set color and we're going to grab color and then pass in the color then we're going to... and then we're going to grab the other shader on this material so material dot shader equals shader dot find specular s p e c u l a r with a capital s and then we're just going to go ahead and set this color so material dot set color and we're going to target underscore spec color and pass in the color so a lot like we did with the paint globs to give them that color and texture we're going to do the exact same thing for the building and the reason that we're going with materials inside of the renderer instead of just material is we know that our buildings have a roof and a side material set to them so we're going to want the array rather than just grabbing renderer.material. Because if we do that, then only one material of the two is going to get colored. Perfect. Now all we have to do is call this function. So let's go up to on collision enter. And right above handle damage, we're going to say paint building. And we're going to pass in the other dot game object. And then here in on trigger enter, we are also going to call paint building and pass in other dot game object. Now let's go take care of this POI hit function before we forget. So let's hop back over to unity and we're going to go find our game manager script, which is pretty close by and double click that and it'll open it up in our IDE. And we just need to go add one function right here above public void building hit. We're just going to say public void POI, all lowercase, hit. And we're going to do something pretty similar to the building hit. And because we're making this change and we don't really want to violate the dry principle, let's add one more function. And we're going to say private void subtract 
from score. And we're going to pass in, pass in an integer amount and call it amount. And we're just going to say score equals math f dot max zero and the score minus the amount. So almost the exact same thing we did up here in building hit. Only now we're controlling how much is being taken away from the score and we can call it from multiple functions. So let's update this building hit and just say subtract from score. And what did we have it at before? Minus five. And we'll pass in five. And then we'll head up to the point of interest hit or POI hit and we'll say subtract from score. And let's pass in 25. Now this looks better, but we have one more way that we can fix this to be done the absolute right way. So we're gonna make a quick change. We're gonna go up to the top and we're gonna add a serialized field. First, we're gonna say serialized field, private int, ink damage score. And we're gonna set that to five by default. Actually, that's gonna be one. Then we need another serialized field. And we're going to say private int building damage. Let's actually shorten these to DMG. So let's go up to tank and we're going to shorten this to tank DMG score. And then the second variable is going to be building DMG cost. And we're going to set this to five. And then we need one more serialized field. And we're going to say private int POI DMG cost. And we'll set that to 25. This will allow us to update these scores from our game manager and put it exactly where we want it to be. Let's scroll back down. And we're going to go to enemy hit, this function here, where we are going to hit this when an enemy tank is destroyed. And we're going to say score plus equals tank DMG score. And then here in POI hit, we're going to say subtract from score POI DMG cost. And then in building hit, we're going to say building DMG cost. And we'll save that. And to follow conventions, I should have named this with a capital P. So let's do that and then go change it in our map box collision in our map box collision manager real quick sorry to jump around so scroll down to this game manager dot instance dot poi hit and we'll just update that with a capital p save the script and let's go back to unity now that we've got all this set up we just have a couple more steps to get our map box vector objects up and running with this script that we just created let's go ahead and right click on map box modifiers this folder that we created under resources and we're going to create a new map box modifier and we're going to add a new mono behaviors modifier. So click that and we're just going to call it collision handler. Now this types that's over here in our options, we're going to click that, change the array size to one. Let me scroll this over so that we can see this a little more clearly. If you'll notice, it's looking for an element of monoscript type, which, as luck would have it, we have handy. So let's click and drag this Mapbox Collision Manager into that slot. And now all of our objects are going to have that. Perfect. So let's scoot this back to the side. And let's press play just so you can see what I'm talking about. OK, so we paused it real quick so that I could get a good view of our map. And now that we're a little bit closer so we can get a good view, we're going to unpause. And once it generates, I'm going to click off of that map and look down here. So we're going to need to do a couple of things here real quick. So I'm going to start, I'm going to stop running that. And we need to add a few things to our scene for everything we've set up to work. First off, the paintball needs to be a trigger. So we want to make sure that it is, which at this point it's not. So go ahead and click is trigger 
on the sphere collider for the paintball because we want to make sure it goes through objects rather than bouncing off of them. Second, we're going to need to drop our tank generator onto our scene because we never got around to that. So click on the map route and scroll down to the very bottom to our tank factory. And we're going to drag that and drop it onto the object. We're then going to update this spawn height to two because 10 is a little much. And then we're going to grab this enemy tank prefab and just drop it into the spawn object field. Next, we need to make a couple of changes while we're here in the map route to one of our vector layer visualizers. This extruded buildings visualizer, we need to update. We need to turn off grouping features. Otherwise, they'll all group up and our tanks will spawn on top of them and they'll all have the same collider, which is not what we're going for at all. We want them all to be individuals so that one building is its own object. Having the grouping turned on saves a lot of processing power because it basically wraps a whole bunch of buildings. All of the, all of the buildings on the same tile get grouped together and become one object and it's much easier for Unity to handle. However, that goes against the goal of the game, so we're turning that off. Next, we need to go to the bottom down here with our game object modifiers. And let me scroll this over so that you can get a better look at it. Underneath this building tag modifier that we added already, create a new game object modifier. And into this modifier, we are going to drag well, really, we can just select it from here. And let's go search for the collision handler right there. That's the one we want. Perfect. And in case you want to do it the other way, it's inside of our map box modifier, this collision handler right here. So you can drag and drop that on as well, just like that. And with that, we're ready to roll. So let's go ahead and drag this back this way to maximize our screen space. And we're going to press play and see what happens here. Let's deselect these buildings. And let's watch as this tank fires. Perfect. There is one little problem with the way that this script is set up. Right now, the paintball won't stop when it goes and hits one building. It's going to go straight through them, and we need to fix that. But we're going to save that for the next video because this one's getting a little long. And there are a couple of other collision things we need to fix as well. So we'll just group that together. In this video, we've learned how to dynamically assign scripts for map box objects that are generated at runtime. That sounds like a whole lot of technical gobbledygook. But what that really means is we've learned how to add scripts, give actions, give properties, all of that stuff to map box objects that don't even exist when we start the game. They're set up dynamically for us. We don't have to touch a thing, which is super awesome. That means that we could really generate this map anywhere in the world and it would all react the same way our game would work. So great job following along. I'm excited to move on to the next lesson, so let's go. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.